Hello. I'll begin with a brief introduction of uh, I think each of us, and then we'll go into talking about uh, collaborative work. I'm Kiran Kumar. I'm based between Berlin and uh, Bangalore, in Bangalore at the moment. And I work as an artist, researcher, and writer. It's a kind of a hybrid that I feel needs to be held together. And uh, I'll just let some images run from, my, from some of my works while I talk to you a little bit more about the practice that emerges out of uh, out of my work and uh, my work as an, uh, in all three spheres of art, research and writing comes uh, out of a practice of dance, yoga and traditional somatics, I would say. And it's something that I've uh, come to call as expanded writing, which I see as, a, uh, as artistic, critical and conceptual practice all kind of rolled into one. And it uh, emerges for me from the idea or the need to reconfigure choreography as a process of making deep inscriptions into various lived spaces, be they psychophysical, sociopolitical, artistic, scientific, philosophical, and technological. And uh, this practice of expanded writing considers multiple modes of writing or inscription, including words, videos, drawings, dances, sounds and increasingly also more digital visualizations and sonifications, which is kind of what brings me to tech art. And uh, as a result of this, this, this expanded inscription allows the writing to ultimately manifest in various forms, including print publications, performative readings, exhibitions, video installations, and archiving, which uh, kind of brings me to my uh, current preoccupation since 2016. I've been busy with a long-term artistic research called Archipelago Archives, which is conceptually, critically, and fictively lodged somewhere in the Indian Ocean, and researching into cultures and countries around the Indian Ocean Rim from India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, Malaysia, Myanmar, and such. Now over to Alistair. How is a predator drone like a green screen? At first glance, these technologies, one destructive, the other creative, may seem at odds with one another. Principally, a military drone removes a pilot from the dangerous context of the battlefield. Meanwhile, the green screen operates in the opposite direction, transposing actors' bodies into new and remote contexts. Despite their contrariety, however, the two share a common premise. Each functions with the auxiliary purpose of reducing the user's risk of injury to zero. Unexpected equivalences between predator drones and green screens, disco balls and hellfire missiles, artist studios and war zones, often lie at the heart of my research-based practice. Though my work inv investigates diverse topics from queer nightlife and ecology to the military industrial complex and its architectures, I'm continually drawn to the question of what it means to survive. In the context of a global pandemic amid ecological breakdown and perpetual remote controlled warfare, I ask what might queer survival look like? Most recently, I've been working on Queer Survival GAN, an AI model trained on images of disco balls, coronaviruses, and imaginary apocalypses in order to imagine, in order to explore the queer community's ability to adapt, evolve, and survive a pandemic at the macro scale, and the coronavirus's own processes of mutation, adaptation, and survival at the molecular scale. Whereas AI is often deployed to sharpen distinctions between categories, here, the diverse imagery of the training set does the opposite, querying the algorithm by blurring distinctions and producing non-binary forms. In doing so, the project aims to cultivate a queer aesthetic, establishing concept a conceptual link between AI's capacity to generate new imagery based on, I don't know what's happening with this flashing image, it should be a video, but there you go. <laughs> um, establishing a conceptual link between AI's capacity to generate new imagery based on visual archives and Jose Munoz's definition of queerness as an ideality that can be distilled from the past and used to imagine a future. And handing over to Rashni. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm an artist and art therapist, currently based in Bangalore. So I work across disciplines from drawing, um, installation, weaving, media art, 
and it's constantly evolving. Um, I'm very interested in creating immersive environments and um, looking to expand my work towards that field. And I feel really more confident after this fellowship. Um, I'm also part of a collective called Found Space, um, which hosts um, artists uh, and art therapists from Southeast Asia. Um, here we focus on expanding the boundaries of therapeutic spaces um, through multidisciplinary collaboration. Um, we run various participatory projects, art for social action projects and community outreach. Um, so this piece is uh, as part of one of my longer inquiries in both my art practice and within um, the psychotherapeutic context. I've been looking at the body as a site of knowledge and how art and creativity acts as a means to both contain and translate implicit data and embodied memories. Um, so this was created in response to my clinical practice in trauma work. Um, so created with multiple mediums and stitched together just using like my phone. Um, yeah, so I think that the time is a bit longer. I'm actually done. <laughs> so um, that's me. And um, this is the work installed um, at different exhibits in the Netherlands and Singapore. Um, so soon we'll introduce to you Rani and I'll pass it over to Alistair and Kiran. Uh, so our collaborative uh, project is called Rani, which is uh, an acronym for Room for Alternative Intelligences. And as we were dreaming up this idea with the kind of questions we asked ourselves went like, where could children mess with deep machine learning? Where would um, folk dances meet digital databases? Where would indigenous technologies queer our digital encounters? Because we found that across disciplines of art, science, anthropology, philosophy, and technology, there are ample examples of local and embodied and critical ways of knowing that often come up against um, dominant global and rational ways of uh, modes of knowledge production. So. With Rani, uh, it, it, it's a gesture to kind of name and make a space for these countercurrents in intelligence. We're, we're, it's an expanding digital space as we, as we conceive it, and it houses research resources, curated dialogues, and multi, multimodal sketches from ongoing projects of artistic research with a focus on uh, alternative intelligences. So practitioners from various disciplines, like our colleagues from the previous presentations have been invited to cohabit Rani for a stipulated duration, during which they share resources, stimulate dialogues and engage uh, in individual and collaborative studio practices. In these cohabitations, we intend to uh, nurture and create a mutually supportive research environment for artistic research that kind of ruptures the cocoon of individual artistic residencies and moves towards um, kind of a more so solidary space for artistic projects and artistic research. And Alistair will walk us through the prototypes. So I'm posting a link in the chat that you can all access um, for our prototype that we're showing. We designed several rooms in Blender and then uh, exported those to Mozilla Hubs. So these are live 3D virtual spaces that you're all invited to um, walk through. Um, and there should be, so when you <laughs> come across the link, we've got a flashing video again, um, you should be able to enter the room. I'm not really sure what's going on with our videos here. Sorry. Um, but it's a three-dimensional space that you can enter as such and using the arrow keys walk around. Um, there's kind of a holding room here which kind of gives an idea of what the overall project is about and then you can see on the side there are various rooms um, that you can click on uh, and explore. And for the purposes of this we 
obviously could probably have invited everyone <laughs> who took part in this residency in this fellowship because all of these projects kind of sit at these intersections between you know whether it's um indigenous technologies or um folk practices and the tech ai kind of sphere um but these two projects in particular you've just heard about not a conversation and give me a sign um you can go in and access these rooms like so from the main holding room and you'll be transported and it gives a way of visualizing not only the projects as you'll see in this case with the kind of three-dimensionalized version of that um, knot sculpture that we've heard all about um, that you can walk around, but also giving some space for the actual research behind um, the process. So we kind of envision it not just as, we didn't want to create another online exhibition space, but really a repository for, and an archive, we're kind of continually um, expanding archive of the research um, and yeah, I think as we can move on to Roshni, who will talk a little more about one of the rooms that you haven't heard so much about. I'll just wait for this one to end. Um. Alistair, I think the flashing is the revenge of the disco ball being <laughs> removed. <laughs> <laughs> It's a strobe, strobe lighting. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe, Manan, we can skip a couple of slides. All right, perfect. If you could let me know which one to skip to. Yeah, until maybe two more. Just because we've, uh, <laughs> we're losing some time in the buffering. Uh, it's funny with digital words sometimes. <laughs> yes. So here you see a bit of, um, give me a sign, and then we can move on to this garden that we've created that Roshni will tell you about. Yeah, so the third room is called Garden of Intelligent Delight. So this hosts um, a series of children's drawings and looks at curiosity as a means for alternative knowledge. Um, so the flowers you actually see in this room, they were created um, by children in collaboration um, with the machine using um, this magic sketchpad. It's a website that actually uses AI to complete a drawing according to a category that you choose. Um, so this interaction with these children actually took place um, within this weekly art studio group that I run. Um, so this has been running since the pandemic and uh, new mediums are introduced weekly and uh, very like, you know, inspired by this fellowship, I introduced uh, tech art as one week's medium. Um, so while sketching um, these like, you know, little drawings, they began asking, um, these really intriguing questions that even I don't have the answer to. Um, and they actually can link to a lot of larger questions about tech and AI that we've all been discussing. So um, for example, some of these questions are um, like, how will someone know what I drew and what the computer drew? Um, who is completing my drawing? Does the machine not know that there are many types of flowers? Um, so when we link these questions to in the larger context, they are actually, you know, we can talk about accessibility, data privacy, authorship, who is creating this software and, you know, inclusivity, consciousness, intelligence, and more. Um, so um, if you want to see more of their, they also responded to these inquiries artistically through some tangible mediums. So if you want to see more, you can like visit the room and also try out the magic sketchpad. It's quite fun, but creepy. So um, 
and we'd like to end uh, with a song of Rani. So, um, for which we actually just have a minute, so maybe we can run it until. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Next. <laughs> I hope the sound works. Manan, have you shared screen audio? Humko khud ki khabar nahi yaro Tum zamane ki baat karte ho Muted drone of the terminals Monitor Mogilinangal Dim cloud of the monitor screens Karpul Kale White Safed Silver Chandi Blailam Nile Kraila Vili Malai Liquid lightning in my skull something like the godhead as I dream Kanil Kanavu I dream a quiet glassy dance of symbols Kanavil Kan Mani 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 Pidungum Martam Not a set of objects but a shared inquiry Not a collection but a constellation Not a map of the territory but a contour that does not stop at the edge a diagram artatin korvai a drawing of the world duniya ki ek chitra a drawing of the world that includes practice kare illa da kadal a drawing of the world that includes the world of practice duniya ki ek chitra jisme abhyas a drawing of the world that includes the world of thinking about practice divin nakare uru arai i dream a room ek kamre ka sapna in the areal no wind kaatrile no sound poli ilai a great quietness in the air ek mahan dayal in the ground hawa mein rani in the river are ilai arun mane snow is melting in the great sunlight and i stand in the forest and there's all this what is it Thank you and sorry for going over time we had some buffering issues yeah